If you like cameras as much as I like cameras, you've probably bought one from eBay before. However, if you're just getting into film photography, or if you haven't bought much online before, there are a few pitfalls to be aware of. I've bought quite a lot of cameras from eBay, including about 12 from Japan over the last few years. In this video, I'll be sharing my 12 tips for buying film cameras from eBay. Tip number one, research the camera. Make sure it's really right for you. Read reviews, watch YouTube videos. Really think about it. Do you really want and need this camera? If there's someone else who lives near you who's got one, ask if you can meet up with them to try it out and look through the viewfinder. Sometimes we think we really want something and then when it arrives in our hands, we worked out that maybe it doesn't suit us for one reason or another. Make sure with every camera you buy, you can still get batteries and film for the cameras. The amount of people I've seen in Polaroid Facebook groups over the last few years who've just picked up a land camera, they're really excited to shoot this camera, and then they're, unfortunately they're told that there's no current manufacturer for pack film, and if they wanna use that camera they've just bought, they'll be paying 100 US dollars or more for a pack of film, not really the news they wanted to hear. Also make sure that you can still get batteries for it. Some older cameras do take sort of outdated batteries and you might need to do use a workaround or sort of source them from somewhere around the world before you can use the camera. Also with your research, make sure you know about the models and the variations in the camera lines. For example, an Olympus XA is not the same as an XA1 nor an XA2 and the prices of those cameras differs quite a bit. So make sure you know which model of camera you want and how much you should pay for it. Years ago, I made this mistake. I heard all these people talking about an Olympus Mu2. I went into eBay and found quite a cheap one. It was 40 US dollars, what a bargain. When it arrived, it you know, was an Olympus Mu2 Zoom 80. I thought I was so clever in buying this camera cheap. And then I realized that the camera everyone was talking about was not the Mu2 Zoom 80, it was just the Mu2, the fixed lens Mu2. Luckily I resold it for as much as I paid for it, but it could have been a bit of a disaster. The second time it happened, I thought I was buying a Fujifilm Class S. I downloaded the Class S manual from online, and it wasn't until I was on a trip to Sydney, I had the camera in my hand and I had the manual, and I was looking at the manual thinking, these buttons and dials don't look the same as my camera. And I realized I'd actually bought the original Fujifilm class, not the class S. It's very, very easy to do. So make sure you know your models of camera and make sure you buy the right one. Also make sure that the camera you're buying is legit. I say this with particular reference to Leicas. You know, decades ago, there were a lot of camera manufacturers who tried to make clones of Leicas and pass them off as the real thing. So make sure whatever you're buying really is what they say it is. Now, Facebook groups can be an absolutely fantastic source of information. If you have any questions about cameras or if you wanna find out if the camera is real or not or anything like that, post it up in a Facebook group. Most people are very knowledgeable and helpful and will help you out. And there's two types of the groups, I guess. There's the general sort of film photography or vintage camera groups. There's also particular groups around models or brands of camera, like the Contax G groups and the Leica groups. So seek them out and make use of the experts in those groups. Tip number two, research the price of your film camera. This is very easy to do on eBay. You type in the model camera in the top of the search bar, click search, and then on the left-hand side, click sold listings. This will give you information on all of that model and brand of camera that have recently sold and how much they sold for. Now with this information, what you wanna do is take some notes. You wanna note down how much each one sold for, what kind of condition what it was in, what lenses, what accessories it came with, if there's anything wrong with the cameras, all that kind of information is really useful for you to build up a picture of the kind of camera you want, what you want to come with it, and how much you should pay. Make sure you are comparing like with like. For example, if you want a working Polaroid SX70, do not record you know, the prices of cameras that were sold that were untested or broken. There's no point. You wanna make sure that you're comparing like with like. Now with your pricing research, you also may wanna consider is it better to buy a bulk lot of items? So for example, if you're buying a Contax G camera, is it better to buy the body and two lenses and the flash all together? Or could you source those items separately for a cheaper price? 
I've found both in the past. Sometimes I've found that buying a bulk lot of items is actually cheaper with the shipping combined and all that. Other times I've found it's actually better and cheaper for me to buy the items individually. So it all comes down to the sellers and what they're currently selling items for. But don't rule out either way, of either buying a bulk lot or buying the items individually. Both can work for you. Number three, set up eBay alerts on your email and your phone. eBay are very helpful in they want you to keep going back and buying stuff to make them lots of money. And they have these lovely little things called alerts. You can get a smartphone alert about eBay items and you can also get you know, items emailed to you. You know, when new items come up for sale, they will send you a daily reminder that there's four new Nikon 35 Ti's for sale. That's a really good reminder for you to check, see what's on the market, see what's come up and sort of help with your price research. And you know, if you're looking for a particular model of camera in a particular condition with you know, the lenses and the accessories and all that kind of stuff, this is a great way of finding out when one comes onto eBay. And if it's the right price, you can pounce and buy it right then and there. Also check all the emails that eBay sends you because sometimes, not so much the last couple of years here in Australia, but certainly two, three years ago, they were sending out coupon codes all the time. So, you know, there can be special deals with eBay if you pay a certain way or if you join their eBay Plus. You know, sometimes these deals can work for you. So make sure you read those promotional eBay emails. Number four, read the eBay listings and look at the photos very, very carefully. You can check anything you're not sure about with the seller by sending them a message. Condition is key to a camera's value. That is both working condition and cosmetic condition. Perfect working condition is the first thing you should look for. If there's anything that affects the working condition of the camera, think twice before buying. Cosmetic issues can include things like scratches, dents, LCD display, leakage, broken parts, all that kind of stuff. These issues may not affect the functionality of the camera, but they might affect their resale value. Now, when I'm researching a particular camera, I always make a note of what I really want. So for example, I'm looking at the Nikon 35 Ti at the moment, and I've decided I want one with the soft case and with the strap. I don't really care about the original box. It's just one more bit of cardboard hanging around the house. And I don't really want the manual. And that is because a lot of the cameras are being sold out of Japan even though it may look like English on the front of the manual, they're all in Japanese if you look closely. So I don't really want the box, I don't really want the manual, but I do want the soft case and I do want the strap. So make sure you note that down and before you press buy it now, make sure that the item you're buying has got the things you want. Also things like the eye cup, apparently the eye cup comes off the Nikon 35 Ti a lot of red. So make sure you look at the photos and make sure the eye cup is still on there. Usually with the camera, the more accessories and the more things you get with it, the more sort of valuable the listing. So it might come with a manual, strap, case, original box, remote control, lens hood, filters. All of these things are really good for a resale value. And like I said, check with the seller about the manual. If you're not sure if it's in English or Japanese, just send them a message and ask. Japanese sellers are generally pretty good with describing lenses. They'll usually give you a description detailing any scratches, fungus, haze, balsam separation, or dust that the lens might have. Most lenses will have some sort of dust in them which will rarely affect the shooting experience. I love that Japanese sellers often mention tiny dusts. Their listings are generally pretty cool. If the seller mentions that the camera is untested and is for parts, you really have to consider whether it's worth buying at all. You might be sending them your money and you might end up with a paperweight. Personally, I have bought a couple of cameras in the past that I thought I could fix or that I thought might work and they didn't. I basically wasted my money. So you have to be very careful before you hand your money over if it says untested or for parts. You can get lucky, of course. I've heard about people who've bought cameras that were listed as untested or for parts. All they did was put a new battery in or clean them up and they worked perfectly. But that's a judgment you'll have to make. Tip number five, research the seller. When you found an item you think looks pretty good, you can click on the seller's name on eBay and have a look at their feedback rating. Ideally, what you wanna see here is that they've been in business a while, you know, they've got a few hundred or a few thousand sales to their name, and have a look at their feedback percentage. You ideally, you know, you'd want someone with a positive feedback rating of 97, 98% and above. Some people will tell you that they only buy from people with 99% and above. 
I'm not sure how practical that is if you're selling a lot of volume of things to get that higher rating. It is possible, um, but personally, I would aim for about you know, 97, 98% and above and really have a look at their feedback and see what people are saying about the items. Also have a look at the seller's return policy. If they are selling something that's untested or for parts, and if they have a return policy, you could always buy it and then you could ask for a return. You'll have to pay for the return shipping, but hey, you haven't lost that much. All you've lost is the return shipping. So have a look for that as well. Tip number six, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. A couple of years ago, there were a whole load of scams on eBay where sellers, mostly in like China, were selling like 500 rolls of C200 for 20 bucks, or they were selling pack film or Instax Mini for unbelievably low prices. I got scammed in once. I paid my money waiting patiently for my Instax Mini film to arrive. It never arrived and a couple of months later I put a claim in with eBay and I got my money back. I'm not sure what kind of scam this was because in my experience the people who fell for it, we all got our money back. I think it was just some way for the seller to get a lot of money very quickly off idiots like us who, who believed that we were getting this film. So it's really odd, if, if something's too good to be true, it usually is, steer clear and save your time and your money. Tip number seven, bid late and bid high. I always try and bid in the last 20 seconds of an auction and I always try and bid a bit higher. So for example, just say I'm looking at a camera and I think it's worth 800 US dollars. I'm happy paying 800 US dollars for it. I'll always add 10% to that. I'll always bid 880 because quite often I'm pipped at the post. The last dying seconds of the auction, I'm beaten out by someone else by 10 bucks and I'm really annoyed because it's a camera I want. It's got all the accessories, the, the seller's got a good rating and the, the shipping was a good price and I've just missed out on it. So I'll always add 10% on that, put in that offer right near the end. If I lose the item, I lose the item. But at least I had a good crack at it and I didn't miss it by say 10 bucks or whatever. For auctions that are based overseas, I use an eBay sniper called Gixon. I have the paid version, which is only a few bucks a year. You can import your watch list and you can bid on each item and Gixon will bid for you. There's a few settings in there you wanna check just to make sure that if the item is outside your country, all the bids go through okay. Gixon is invaluable to me because quite often if I'm buying an item from the UK or the USA, the auction will end at three or four in the morning and I don't really want to get up <laughs> at three or four in the morning. Uh, so it's fantastic, it bids for you, you wake up and you check your phone, you see if you've won or not. Tip number eight, ask for a discount on fixed price items. So most of the sellers in Japan have fixed prices for their goods. Quite often I've sent through a message to them saying, you know, asking them questions about the camera and saying, hey, is there a small discount I could have? And I have got, you know, discounts up to 15% before. Usually it would only be a two or a three or a 5% discount if they give me one. But I have, you know, had discounts of 10 and 15% before. It's always worth asking. They might say no, but that's okay. Number nine, always pay with PayPal. Of course, when you buy through eBay, you've got some guarantees as a buyer there, but you've also got the PayPal guarantees as well. So it's kind of giving you a double guarantee. So I always buy everything with PayPal. Even though eBay and PayPal aren't as close as they used to be, they're a little bit separated now, I still always buy everything on eBay through PayPal. Now, when I buy from PayPal overseas, it will give me the option, do I wanna charge my credit card in Australian dollars or with the original currency, whether it's uh, US dollars or British pounds or whatever. I always choose the original currency. I always make sure they bill my credit card in US dollars or British pounds. The reason for that is my credit card doesn't charge me any transaction fees. It will convert the amount straight from British pounds or US dollars to Australian dollars. There's no extra fees. I find that my credit card company give me a much better rate against other currencies than PayPal do. Tip number 10, get ready for your camera's arrival. When you buy that camera and it's on its way, you've got the tracking confirmation, it's only five days out, make sure you've got everything ready. See if you can download the manual from the internet. Watch those YouTube videos again in the reviews. Make sure you've got batteries, make sure you've got fresh film. Yes, you're gonna need fresh film. You don't wanna test a new camera or a you know, vintage camera with expired film because then you'll never know if the problem is the film or the camera. So get some fresh film, get a couple of rolls, get out there in your neighborhood and as soon as that camera arrives, get out there and test the camera. Make sure everything's working properly and send a couple of rolls off to the lab or develop them at home by yourself as quick as you can to make sure that everything's working, you know, there's no issues with the camera, the shutter, the aperture blades, the flash, 
all that kind of stuff. Check everything and make sure your images look good. Number 11, talk to the seller if there's an issue. Be polite and courteous. Make sure that you send them some proof of what you're talking about and see what they say. Quite often, you know, it can be user error sometimes. Maybe there is something that you think is broken, but it's not. Maybe you haven't read the manual properly. So it's always good to find out, you know, make sure you know what you're talking about before you sort of contact the seller. Another good way of finding out whether something's an issue, like it's a problem or it's just your, you're not knowing much about the camera, is it once again, Facebook groups. You know, go into a Facebook group, say, I've just got this camera, it's having this issue. You know, is there, is there something I can do to fix this or is it broken or what's the story? And people who've used that camera, own that camera, can give you lots of great information about it. Number 12, make sure you know what your rights are. Here in Australia, we have very strong consumer protection laws. So make sure you know what the consumer protection laws are in your country. For example, if a seller said that a camera was in working condition and when you got it, it wasn't, you might go back to them and ask for a refund. They might say, sorry, no returns. In Australia, they have to, by law, give you a refund if the item description was inaccurate or wrong. They have to. It doesn't matter if they say no returns on the listing or not. It doesn't matter. Get onto eBay chat, eBay contact center. They are very, very helpful. I've had a number of really good interactions with them over the years. They will ask for details. They'll ask for the listing. They'll ask for all that information. And I don't think I've ever had an issue that wasn't resolved in a positive way, either by the seller or by the eBay contact staff. That's it for my 12 tips for buying film cameras off eBay. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you've got any more advice for people, please put it down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe because there's plenty more film photography videos coming up right here.